our rigging's arrived. How cool is that? You're just meant to have a Guinness. And who am I to break a tradition, you know? Kara's annoyed at me because I briefed her about six times this morning on what her plan is and she's like, can we just go? We have a big announcement. Welcome to our self-inflicted adventure. What seems like a lifetime ago, we left Australia, intending to sail our way around the world. It's been a roller coaster since then, and while the plan has changed many times, we've been laughing our way through and learned a new lesson for every step of the way. And between us, the real adventure has only just begun. I'm heading down on a ferry to Grenada. Um, it's a little bit noisy though, so I think I'll update you guys on the way, but this is where I'm going. All right, so as I said, I'm here in Grenada. And our rigging has arrived. I've been uh, eagerly checking it every hour, I think, uh, the tracking number. And it arrived last night at about 10 p.m. So hopped in the first ferry, and I was the first one on it at 5 a.m. in the morning, <laughs> which meant a very early wake up. So a few things to do today. First of all, I need to go and get a few things signed, stamped, go to FedEx several times, probably chase them up a little bit, but that'll only kind of take about an hour out of my whole day. And then I have a 5.30 ferry to catch back again. So I do kind of need a little bit of time. I'm not sure how yet, but I do believe there is a very nice looking um, castle. It's all the way up on the hill that I've never been to. And since this is possibly the last time we'll be in Grenada for a long time, maybe, um, I figured I may as well just tick that box. So all paperwork was done. I expected it to take a lot longer and pretty much by 9.30 I'd given her everything and everything was kind of wrapped up. I still haven't obviously collected the parcel, she needs to do her end. Um, and also I don't really want to be carrying around this massive amount of rigging all day until 5.30 when I can get the ferry back home. I guess I didn't really explain as well why the reason why I took the ferry over here <clears throat> and also why not Adam as well. It was purely because I just didn't really want to pay, we just didn't want to pay for uh, for two lots of fares. So in Karyaku it just takes a little bit longer to get things than if you're down in Grenada um, and that's obviously because it needs to actually get put on the ferry and all paperwork etc needs to go on a ferry down to Grenada then it will be returned back again and it's just like an extra few days in the step when we're so we just want to kind of get this whole process wrapped up we want our full stay back we want to kind of go out for a sale um, and because it's Wednesday now as well we were running the risk of if we had have waited for the ferry to drop our things off it might not have been until Friday or Monday more likely and then it's an extra five days more. So that's um, one reason why we kind of just decided to, that I would jump on the ferry today. The other reason is because as I mentioned we obviously don't have a full stay as well and without a full stay that means that we can't sail anywhere so because it's about 25 miles to get down to Grenada to get here we would have been motoring for about five hours here about five hours back again um, which isn't really ideal we don't really want to do that um, and also kind of mainly like it sounded a bit fun just to come to Grenada for a day trip um, I don't know like there wasn't really too much that we were doing in Karyaku so it was kind of like a little bit of an excursion to, to go on and uh, I don't know I just thought it would be a bit fun as well that was kind of the main thing you know something else to do for the day I also had a look as well where that where a fort was on the island you'll see right now I'm near a fort but uh, it is a fort that we've already been to and the other one is up a massive hill so I kind of looked at it looked at the other fort that was closer and decided to walk up to this fort but 
what it also means as well is that I'm very close to um, the local Grenadian hospital here and thought I'd go and give blood. <laughs> I've been kind of meaning to do it for a while and, uh, and I thought well I have some time to kill so I'll go there and see if they will accept me as a candidate. Um, Australia won't let me because I was in England during mad cow disease so I haven't been able to give blood for years which is why I'm like yay! <laughs> yay I can be able to give blood! So I'll try going in there and doing that now. How cool is that? So apparently it's a tradition that after you give blood in Grenada you're just meant to have a Guinness uh, and who am I to break a tradition you know? So they give you they give you free beer after you give blood if that's not an incentive that everyone should just do everywhere I don't know what is. Um, but yeah anyway there you go I've given back to the community a little bit. I wanted to go a few months ago but if I had known they also did that I really 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 would have tried to make the effort to come. And Adam too. <laughs> All right, well now that I've actually killed some time, I really should go back and do what I actually came here for, which is uh, picking up some rigging. the ferry on time. Just uh, a few more hours and I'll be back in in Kariku. It'll be dark by the time I get back but I'm really really hoping that uh, the marina will have some space tomorrow and we can hopefully put this bad boy up. We've checked the rigging this morning, it's all good. We've compared everything against the um, rigging, the old rigging and it's all bang on. Um, so it's pretty much just time to go in the marina. We're gonna head there now, we've got everything set up and yeah, we're gonna go, really. So I think the problem we had last time when we were docking was that we, there was a bit of confusion about where on the dock we were gonna go. So I was basically ready for lines to go out and the deck crew thought that we were going much further forward and so we didn't get go into action of doing the lines. Right, hey, get some lines on, come on, go to work. Get a line on, get something. I don't have that kind of control, get a line on. We got a spring line on just fine, but then the stern got away from us and the bow got away from us and we ended up just kind of like hanging off from the bow. So this time we're gonna do the, the bow spring up and we're gonna go forward idle with full opposite lock and try to snug up against the dock. And hopefully this time <clears throat> we'll get a bow line, midship and stern line on really fast so that it doesn't get away from us. So hopefully it goes a lot smoother now that we're all on the same page. Kara's annoyed at me because I briefed her about six times this morning on what her plan is and she's like, can we just go? He's making me nervous with so many run-throughs. I just want to get this done now. <laughs> Perfect timing, just ready for a nice small up here. Yeah? I know it's a bit of a risk adverse decision but shorthanded and you know when we it was nine knots when we left and I'm seeing 25 off the dock in a squall just a squall why would you not wait and we're not in that much of a hurry we have all day and as if I'm gonna go up you know I'm gonna wait for the rain to do the work so why do I need to dock in the rain okay round two that only lasted five minutes.
a fresh change of clothes and some breakfast in my belly. And uh, well, look, that was not the most graceful of entrances once again. <laughs> um, I'm really surprised because it's actually quite an easy entrance in comparison to other docks where you need to back up. Um, and we still haven't, we didn't really master it both times that we've been in here. In hindsight, Adam and I have both had uh, a chat now and uh, do you want to tell people our lesson that we've learned from this? This is definitely a better for a pen and paper, but I'll try. So we came in and I think I said it on before we left, didn't I? We came in, the plan was to put a, a, a bow spring line on to stop the forward motion of the boat and then Kiara was going to go forward, fend off the bow, get the bow line on, midships line, stern line. What happened was that when the, the bow spring line loaded up, as I expected, because Kiara was going to be there to fend off, the yep. bow came swinging around to the dock. But the counterpoint to that is that the stern also gets starts to go walk about off the dock and the timing was such yeah. that there just weren't enough people to be in enough places at once mm -hmm. to counteract that and the bow, the stern rather, got away from us and we ended up having to sort of haul the boat back onto the, the dock. Yeah. What we should have done now in hindsight, having realised the error in our ways, yeah. was um, the spring line method, but instead of fending off the bow, before the spring line from the bow loads up, instead of Kiara going to the front to fend off, she goes to the back and gets a stern line, a short stern line on, and just as the, ba the, the springer loads up and begins to like jackknife the boat around onto the dock, the stern line kicks in, which keeps the nose off the dock, and therefore the whole boat would have just snugged up nicely mm -hmm. against the dock. And I know that's an awful mouthful, and if you do understand what I'm saying, you're probably going, yeah, duh. So I don't think I've satisfied anyone by just trying to explain and this. I just think that it goes to show we're still learners, we still learn these things, Absolutely. and after three years, we finally kind of put two and two together and been like, okay, cool, so that's yeah. how you do it. You know, like, you, yeah. we're still learning. But you know, it takes a long time to get this stuff yeah. right, and you just gotta practice. Yeah. I do have a slight axe to grind. <laughs> We're Nobody not... helped. Everyone just stood around like there were two boats here, fully manned, like seven people within a <laughs> so, hundred yards. Somebody was actually watching us watching too from his this boat. this chaos unfold. Anyway. Both of Kiara running around like a headless chicken. All we needed was one extra set of hands and it would have been seamless. And everyone just stood strange. there. Yeah, so uh, anyway, we were a little surprised, but Celebi, our boat is now on the dock. So we'll get to work. Yep, and then get out of here before something else happens. <laughs> That's exactly what we did last time. We can just Adam wants me to say that there were no real hiccups, everything went really well. I want to say, we're done! We can leave! Yes! We haven't got the jib up yet. Okay, yeah, we haven't got the jib up. We still need to do a few more things. And I won't be walking around anywhere for at least 12 hours. Adam has died. I'm pooped. Um, yep, he had to haul me up the mast. <laughs> but we're done! Yes! We can put the jib up, yes, and then we can go for a sail just to tune the rigging. And then we can go, we can go somewhere else. Are you happy? Yeah, absolutely. It came together really well. We joke about there being no hiccups, but there really were no hiccups. Like it wasn't, um, it was just more difficult reattaching it going up than to de detach it and lower it down. So not to hoist it, but once it's attached, like the wire kind of retreats up into the tube because the tube wants to sag. And it was a bit of, uh, took a, a little bit of cajoling to get it all hooked up properly, but we got there in the end and it's, um, it's all good now. It's knockoff beers, and tomorrow we'll do the rest, I think. Small change of plans this morning. We were originally going to measure some sails dockside here, um, but there's a the marina that we're in um, is using this jetty as a 
so you like you can you can leave your boat without quarantining you can arrive stay here on the yellow they haul the boat out and i think you go straight to the airport and leave something like that so we've kind of got to move on we've sort of had our overnight slash day and um usually they're pretty great they actually let you stay kind of at, leave at your leisure as long as you pay per night but not this time that's okay no harm no foul so we're off we're out to anchor so the plan is to we've just put a loop around a cleat at the stern the plan is the kiara is going to dump all the bow lines we're just going to let the bow go and we're going to pivot around this way still attached or still looped around this stern cleat and then once Kiara is back aboard and the boat's kind of facing the better part of the way through the turn, then we'll dump the stern cleat and we'll drive out. And thank you for getting us far in the video. We, our big announcement is, I'm gonna go back to the beginning. When you started talking, I was like, <laughs> I had this stupid look on my face. I was like, oh, she's really on a roll. I hope she fucks it up so we can go again. <laughs> and go. Hello everybody. Thank everybody. you so much for, you for watching. getting us far in the video. And thank you for watching. Um, I'm just gonna throw it out there, you know, like and subscribe and all that if you have gotten this far. All the obligatories. Yep. But our main reason for interrupting this show is because we have a big announcement. Um, no, I'm not pregnant, as we said. 50-50 <laughs> chance these days. It's not that you're pregnant, but like, yeah, there's a big wave of baby making going on in the sailing, sailing YouTube world. And congratulations to all the new parents. What's our announcement? Our announcement is we are giving birth to some new sails. Yeah. We've just, uh, we've, we've, we've partnered up with Precision and we're super excited and super proud yep. to be considered amongst those people, those boats, those crews that are worthy to be partners yep. with any brand, especially Precision. Um, as you know, we blew out the stay sail some time ago or a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. We're in desperate need of new sails. Uh, our old our old main and our old jib, whilst they're functioning fine, they're pretty tired and they're, yep. they're looking a bit like grandma's undies yep. flying around off the four stay and the boom. Exactly. So we got in touch with Precision and uh, I think after looking at some videos, they, they agreed with us that we uh, that they can do a, a much better job with some sales. And I thought this would be a perfect opportunity and a rare opportunity to um, illustrate and assess the before and after effects of new sales. So I was hoping that I could use this opportunity um, and I floated this by Precision and they were very receptive as well. Could use this opportunity to do a little bit of a deep dive into sort of how sails work, why shape matters, um, what controls a, a sailor has over the shape of their sail, and how old sail, an old baggy sail, can sort of be a, a detriment to those things. And I hope that all of this will culminate in a bit of a before and after sort of direct, com um, direct comparison between old and new, and the performance changes. Um, that you that we experienced through this process. Stand by the next couple of weeks, next couple of months. There's going to be a, a little video series or a couple of videos coming out um, yeah. dealing with that whole process. But for now, we're getting some new sales. We're getting some new sales. <laughs>